Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. I uh, hope everybody had a fun weekend, a great weekend, a relaxed weekend, and hopefully everybody uh, had a good uh, trading day. Um, if you are brand new to the channel, welcome aboard. Thank you for tuning in, spending a few minutes of your life with us. And most important part is thank you very much for giving yourself the opportunity, giving me the opportunity to kind of show you uh, my the way I look at the market on a day-to-day uh, -day basis. So let's talk about the tape. Um, first and foremost, congratulations for everybody uh, who had Tesla. Tesla had a, a really, really a great breakdown, really great breakdown uh, from the 254 level, 252 confirmed the 50-day moving average. Uh, if you watched the weekend update, we talked about a potential move to that 238, 240 level. Unbe beautiful move. I mean, absolutely beautiful move. And you can see it right from the word go. Uh, gap down two, three points uh, and went all the way down to 238, which pretty much uh, closed the cycle on this whole interval, right? It traded right into this rising support. Um, we'll get to the ramifications of Tesla in a second. I, I do like uh, the way it put in the hammer here or kind of reclaim back support. Uh, and it's actually really setting up here maybe for a one or two day uh, potential bounce back into this 252 level. And that's kind of going to be the key. Uh, there's a shot here if you look at the 60 minute view, right? It's getting very, very tight here. That if it reclaims back this whole 60 minute channel that started all the way back to Friday, it actually could get uh, a tradable bounce back into the 252 level uh, where it broke down, for, um, first of all, on, on Friday session. If you correlate that with the five day moving average and you correlate that with the 60 minute supply, you can see both of them have rising or actually declining supply going back into 252. Um, what was very, very uh, impressive of what the Bulls did today, if you guys remember on the video on the weekend, we talked about the Bulls have to hold on uh, to this uh, 357.50 level held back-to-back -back days, Thursday into Friday. Uh, well, we had a nice gap down today. I mean, that was the reason, one of the reasons why uh, Tesla was able to go down seven, eight points today. Uh, I'm pretty confident to say pretty much all of us covered uh, close to that 238 level. Great job again, all you guys. Um, what I like what the Bulls did, the market gap down, you know, Q's traded all the way down to uh, 355, uh, 90s, and then they came back and reclaimed Friday's lows, which were a very, very important thing. And, you know, they kind of started to bounce here. If, if you look at the dynamics of the tape today, you really don't see anything that's going to really stand out. Sure, that was... Uh, pretty, you know, pretty impressive that the Bulls reclaimed, you know, reclaimed uh, rising support. But if you look at the action today, pretty stale. I mean, they're pretty, pretty stale today. You had the Dow up 40 points, and NASDAQ up 60 points, and you had the S&P up 17 points. Uh, if you thought you, you thought the market was slow today, the volume was slow. It was. It was slow. Uh, we we literally only had one natural pivot. Was a pivot on. Uh, NVIDIA. NVIDIA uh, in the morning, everything else was slow. And that was because uh, today is the last night of Yom Kippur. It started yesterday, ending tonight at sundown at six o'clock. So the reason why that's important, a lot of the really big uh, hedge fund managers, uh, you know, a lot of them are Jewish. They're celebrating. Well, I can't, I don't know the word celebrating. Uh, Yom Kippur is the day of atonement. Um, so you have a lot of people off today, a lot of big money managers off today, you know, the David Einhorns, the Stevie Cohns of the world, uh, the Easy Engelbaum. So you had a lot of big decision makers not there, and that's why you saw a lack of range, a lack of volume. Tomorrow they come back to, uh, tomorrow to work, and you also saw a lack of really big uh, production in the options market, very limited amount of big bets being placed, and that was because of the holiday. But tomorrow everybody should be back uh, to work. And when you look at uh, when you look at kind of what the market did today, uh, you can make two cases. The first case was, well, nobody was around uh, to continue to sell this market. Is it really that big of a deal that the market uh, came back and reclaimed Friday's lows? You know, I think it is. I, I think the scoreboard is the scoreboard. I, like I've been saying uh, from every area, every interval that when we lost the 50-day moving average, the market's just not going to go straight down. We are 
uh, don't get it twisted, right? We are below the 50 day moving average and we're, you know, we barely held on. So I think there could be in the next day or so, there could be a tradable uh, dead cat bounce going back to the five day moving average of the Qs. You can see here, the five day correlates uh, to the 62 level. This is where it kept on getting rejected. So if we do indeed have a bounce spot uh, for tomorrow, the Qs might have a shot, might have a shot to get back to uh, the 262 level. Obviously, uh, we're also prepared to the downside as well. I mean, it's very, very uh, important that, again, if you watch this video, it's very, very important that you, you do prepare yourself on both sides. Well, I'll give you guys uh, some ideas for tomorrow, both long and short. But if the Qs uh, do sustain a tradable area, you could see a dead cat balance going to this 362 level. And if that's the case, watch out for the rejection there. That's the most important part. If we do reject if we go back and we test this 362 level and they get rejected, you know, we're going to turn around uh, and start uh, going lower. Uh, look at the SPYs. You kind of have the same scenario going on. We talked about um, on over the weekend video, the potential move to uh, 429. Well, I guess we're at the low today. It was right. Today was the low. Was, uh, was this uh, late today's low was uh, 428.72. But technical analysis works. Okay. Don't let somebody fill your brain. That it doesn't. Stocks just don't stop randomly. Like we talked about in the video that uh, spy should next stop should be 429. That was the low. We talked about in the video that Tesla should have a, a measurable uh, soft potential landing at uh, 238, 240. Guess what? 238 was the low. So technical analysis is not a farce. Okay, it's not something that's made up. People don't just take random numbers out of the sky. These are real numbers, and there's nothing really random about the market. This is why stocks usually stop at areas where they shouldn't. If you embrace technical analysis, it's going to be a much easier way to kind of try to figure out uh, what happens next uh, in price action in your uh, individual name. Uh, the Russell, right? If you look at the Russell today, again, just continues to, um, you know, be the redheaded stepchild. No offense to any redheads out there. Uh, but again, it's a trailer. It's just the, the speculation money is just not there yet, right? It's just not there yet. Uh, before we get substantially bullish, number one, uh, all three indexes have to reclaim this orange line, which is the five day, right? That's kind of what we talked about on the Qs, uh, the 362. Uh, so before we even, even talk about potential something more than a dead cat balance, we need to reclaim 362 on the close on the Qs. Again, there's a flip side, you know, use today's lows, uh, as, um, a, a reaching point, right? A measuring point. Uh, for the rest of the week, because if we start building below uh, 356, and we talked about those August 18 lows on the weekend video, and it seems that a lot of stocks, if they if if they don't hold, uh, if the Qs don't hold today's channels, they will be testing uh, those lows. So let's talk about some ideas uh, for tomorrow. Like I said, today was literally one pivot uh, after you know after covering uh, the Qs, uh, after covering the Tesla, the last batch. Did anybody really need to do anything today? And the market was dead. Uh, we only had one uh, one pivot here. If you look at the 60-minute view, and this is kind of what we talk about, uh, sneaky channels, right? If you've watched uh, any any anything of the PS60 theory, uh, the workshops, you know the importance of these sneaky, sneaky channels that pretty much nobody looks at. They're not the highs. They're not the lows. It's just this channel that's building, building, building. And when it finally gets above the channel, it, it usually does give you a nice pop. A nice little pop for us on the video, a couple of bucks. Again, not, again nothing huge. You're not going to get anything huge. Again, the stocks uh, had no... You know, no real strength. Today. There was nobody around. There was no strength. There was no weakness. There was not no fear to go down. There was not no juice to go up. It was just a matter of just kind of take your cash flow uh, and move on for the day. So let's talk about some ideas uh, for tomorrow. Let me give you guys some longs, some shorts, and we'll see what the natural duration of the market could be for tomorrow. Uh, again, let's start off with Tesla. Again, I love the stock. Okay, I don't pick a direction. I let the market, just, you know, kind of decide which way I'm going to look at it. But look at this bottom channel here, right? It's kind of the same thing. Like, look, take a look. Do a do a do a snapshot, right? Do a snapshot on on uh, Nvidia. You see this whole channel here, right? You see how the bottom of the channel here was was playing out this morning, and it finally got above the bottom channel and finally went right. So look at Tesla, right? It's a carbon copy. Look at Tesla. You have exactly the same forming. You got this bottom channel forming, and if Tesla could just reclaim back this Bollinger band. You know, who knows? I think we could get a move. Uh, I think we could get a move back to uh, the 50-day moving average, roughly 252. Let's watch it, right? Again, let's watch it. We have to be prepared on both sides, so let's definitely uh, keep an eye on it. Uh, keep an eye also on this recent IPO, uh, KVYO. 
And the reason why I'm saying that is it's relatively new. It's only five days. Tomorrow will be a full week. As you can see, it's got a rejected last two out of three days in the same channel here above. Uh, if KVYO starts building above this channel, who knows? Maybe this thing wakes up here. Let me give you guys some short ideas as well. Uh, look at crowd, right? Look at crowd. Crowd is holding on to this linear regression line for dear life. It's held now three, four times, four times in the same area. Keep an eye on crowd. If this thing starts losing this linear regression line, uh, it could get hit. Uh, look at Oracle, right? Oracle, uh, if you guys remember, had bad earnings, attempted a dead cat bounce. Guys, look how close this thing is to uh, reaching or at least uh, touching its earnings lows. You know, one to watch, definitely one to watch uh, for tomorrow. And a name like uh, NET, right? Watch, you know, NET for the next couple of days. Again, it's building a base here. It can't re reclaim the five-day moving average. Watch the bottom channel here. If this thing starts finally confirming this whole bottom channel that started again, August the 18th, right? This thing could start getting hit as well. So we're prepared, right? We're prepared from the long side, the short side. Do I think tomorrow is going to be a premium session? No, but you only need one, right? You only need one. And when you have, you know, when you have stocks that potentially could always give you four five, six points, like what other trades do you possibly want? that's going to pacify your ego, right? So you only need one, Yono, right? You only need one. So if we could get a dead cat bounce tomorrow, I'll watch Tesla, I'll watch the video, maybe we get uh, a second move as well. But the key is guys, take every day, one day at a time. There is no, you know, there is no pressure to trade. Nobody needs to uh, feel like they're, you know, missing out on something. You're not missing out on anything. Like, what did you possibly miss out today, right? If you didn't come in short Tesla, what did you possibly miss out on today, right? That's the whole point. You, you not every single day, you're going to be sitting there and trying to reinvent the wheel. Take what you, the market gives you. Don't stress. Don't rush. Stay patient. Take a deep breath at the open. Let your game plan kind of provide the data to what you're doing for the day. If your game plan is saying, hey, you know what? Tomorrow's less than premium. Maybe tomorrow's not the greatest day for you specifically uh, for your account size, for your experience level to maybe go all in, right? We'll save your chips for the premium days. I think we could get some value tomorrow for sure. But I don't think this is one of those, we have aces, let's wait for them to confirm. But you never know, that's why we play the game. Guys, have a great day. God bless. Happy Monday, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.